segment we're going to look at an example of projectile motion. In this example we have uh, a ball rolling off of a table that's four feet high while moving at a constant speed of five feet per second. So what I've done is I've superimposed the XY coordinate system on the table here. So here's the table, it's four feet high and the ball is rolling in this direction and what we're concerned about is what happens as it leaves the table. Well, since it's moving at uh, an initial velocity of five feet per second, we can represent that with a horizontal vector that is going to have only the I component and so its initial velocity vector is going to be 5i. Remember i is the unit vector for horizontal motion. And then um, of course the path of the ball is going to fall because it's being acted on by gravity. So we need to remember that our acceleration function is a constant function negative gj and um, another thing is the initial position, S naught, is equal to uh, 4. Okay, so these are the things you need to keep in mind. Now we can either plug into the formulas that we developed in the last segment, or we can start from scratch and build from the acceleration to the velocity to the position function, and then answer the questions that we are asked. And that's the technique that I'm going to use, but again, it, it's not necessary but um, that's the way that I, I just prefer to approach the problems. You can just plug into the uh, formulas if you prefer. Alright, so let's start with the fact that the velocity function is the antiderivative of the acceleration, which is negative gj dt, except in this case our um, speed is measured in feet per second, so we're going to use the uh, gravitational constant negative 32 feet per second squared. And so integrating we have that v of t is going to be equal to negative 32 t j plus c and this constant, uh, again, is going to be replaced by the initial velocity because we know that the uh, velocity at time zero, remember um, time zero is going to occur at this uh, moment when the ball leaves the table, the velocity at time zero is going to be equal to 5i. So negative 32 times 0 times j plus c is equal to 5i. Well, that means that c has to equal 5i. So we have the velocity function v of t equals negative 32 tj plus 5i. And you can rearrange them. Like, you know, we usually have the i first, but it, it's not that important. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at is... Um, our position function, which is going to be the antiderivative of our velocity, um, in this case our velocity function being uh, 5i minus 32tj. Okay, so the antiderivative is going to give us 5ti minus 16t squared j, because we're going to add 1 to the t and uh, divide by the exponent and plus c again. Now remember r of t, this is our position function. Um, when t is 0, we have our initial position, s naught, which is equal to 4. So, um, now one thing we need to consider here though is that this is a vector valued function. So, knowing that the initial position is 4 really means that r of 0 is equal to what? Well, if this is our vector valued function here, remember that this is representing the end point of every vector at every given, you know, value of t. So at t equals 0, we have a vector 
that is placing us um, four units vertically up from the origin and so we're at the end of the vector 4j so this constant is actually a vector so in any case we have r of t equals and then we have 5ti minus 16t squared j plus c so we're going to add our two j's c is is 4j so we're going to add these together we're going to have plus 4 minus 16t squared j and that's going to give us our position function now let's go back and answer the questions that were asked part a how long does it take for the ball to hit the floor well hitting the floor means that our vertical component is zero so that means that the coefficient or the component um, of j is going to be equal to zero it doesn't does not mean that this initial that this uh, i component is zero in fact notice that it's pretty likely not um, so what we're going to do then is to find the answer to part a we just set 4 minus 16 t squared equal to 0 which is going to give us that t squared is equal to uh, 4 sixteenths or 1 fourth which means t is plus or minus 1 half now negative 1 half is out of the domain of our um, situation here for our function so we're going to just say t equals 1 half is when um, the ball hits the floor. At what speed does the ball hit the floor is question B and that's referring to the norm of the velocity at time t equals one half. Remember speed is the norm of the velocity. They asked uh, what's the speed when we hit the floor. So we're looking for the norm of now we need to plug one half into our velocity function so that's going to be the norm of the vector negative 16 j plus 5 i so that's going to be the square root of 16 squared plus 5 squared which is going to be the square root of 281 which is approximately 16.8 and the units would be feet per second.